Hello, I'm Mrs H. In this video, we're gonna be sewing the classic handbag. This is a new pattern of mine and I absolutely love it. You can find my other patterns at www.mrs-h.com. This bag is fantastic, I absolutely love it. This is my own handbag, actually. I've emptied it to um, show you. I've been using it for a little while, so apologies if it's looking a little bit worse for wear. Um, I've sewn two others as well, so I can show you those. They come with two different strap lengths. So this one is the one with the 26 inch strap length. And this one is the one with the 30 inch strap length. So you can see there's just a little bit of difference there. And this one, the shorter one we've called the petite strap and the other one is just the regular shoulder strap. So if you prefer a slightly longer strap, then the regular strap is for you. If you prefer a slightly shorter strap, then the petite strap is for you. And let me show you how they both look. So that's the regular strap, regular shoulder strap. And this one here is the petite shoulder strap. This comes up a little bit higher, tucks under your elbow. Um, depending on how tall you are, I'm relatively petite. So um, this one, it gives me quite a bit of space under my elbow. This one tucks up right, right close. So this is a very smart handbag, as I'm sure you've just noticed, it's got some bag feet in the bottom, a nice solid base. It's got zip piping along the pockets um, and then rivets to divide those pockets. It's got two rectangular rings, although you could make this strap an adjustable strap if you like um, an adjustable strap. It hasn't got the instructions in, that, uh, in this video for doing that, but all of my other videos with an adjustable strap will talk you through how to do that. So my own one, I've made that an adjustable strap because I prefer crossbody bags and that's fine. And this one is perfect for customizing for yourself. So the bag closes with a top zipper, really nice, neat finish here. It's a real classic handbag shape, um, which is why I called it the classic handbag. That keeps everything nice and neat. Now this bag hasn't got any binding in it at all. It's a cross between a basic zip pouch, a bag with a gusset, and a bag with box corners, just to add to the fun. So the top zip panel is put in like you would a, um, a regular zip pouch. There's also a gusset, so that your bag has got a nice bit of depth to it. But then the finish on the top corners is a regular box corner and I'll talk you through how to do that. Inside then, you've got two slip pockets, exactly the same as they are on the outside. So these two full width, or this full width slip pocket divided in two. Uh, the lining doesn't have the zip pi pipe in though. It's just a regular slip pocket. You could add a bit of zip pipe in if you want. And then the zip pocket, it's a nice size zip pocket and inside, you've got a contrast fabric there. So I've got my exterior fabric on the inside of the zip pocket when you open it. That does mean that it uses a facing, so there's no um, zip tapes, raw edges shown on the inside of the zip pocket. It's nice and neat. So once, um, once that's all zipped up, it sits nice and neat inside your bag. Um, I think that's everything to say about this bag. I absolutely love it. It's such a gorgeous shape. It's really easy to wear carries everything you need for a regular, regular everyday, I don't know, trip to the shops or to work or um, even we did a day trip with mine and I've got a seven year old daughter. Um, so we managed to fit everything in there apart from our water bottles, which was great. This, um, this cover bag, that one's got zip piping on the front and the label, but then I haven't put the zip piping on the back. I've just left that slip pocket plain. I did add the rivet because I do love rivets. Um, my own handbag, I've added the zip piping to both pockets. This pocket I've divided and added the rivet. This one I've left full width. So you could do that. So you can open, open that pocket up and add anything you want in there. I've actually added a magnetic snap to the middle of mine. If you want to do that, place the magnetic snap at least an inch down from the top of your pocket piece. Okay. This one here, I've divided both of my pockets and I've put zip piping on both of my pockets. And that's because this is the one that I'm gonna show you how to make in the video. 
I hope you sew along with me. I really enjoyed sewing this one and it's quite a quick sew. It makes a great gift and if you sell at craft fairs or online, this one is bound to be a bestseller. Can't wait to get started. Let's start sewing. Right, let's have a look at our interfacing and stabilizers first. So we've interfaced all of the pieces that we are supposed to. And then the start of the pattern shows you where to pop your fusible fleece. So this is on the exterior zip gussets. And you can see that we haven't gone all the way to the end. So these fusible fleece pieces are an inch shorter than the exterior panels. So you should have half an inch at each end that hasn't got fleece on it. Okay, so fuse those on, that's my exterior fabric. Fuse those on into place. Okay. Then we're gonna add our foam. And I've gone ahead and I've done all of my foam apart from this one piece so that I can show you what we're doing but you don't have to hang around waiting for me to, um, to finish. So, um, I'll pop my base line into one side for the minute. So this is my exterior base here and I've cut my foam slightly bigger and this is how I do all of my um, exterior pieces for all of my patterns. So if you're following one of my patterns, chances are this is the way I do it. Okay, so what you can do, I've interfaced that first, and what you can do is just, let's move over here a little bit. I've got my hammer, I don't need my hammer yet, but I've got it ready. I'm just gonna pop this on my ironing board here. I don't know if you can see behind my iron. Move my iron out of the way. So I've got my fleece, uh, sorry, my foam. Got my foam and I've got my exterior fabric. And then I'm gonna pop that onto my foam. And my foam is not fusible. It's just regular sewing foam. But there is a slight nap to it, a slightly sort of fuzzy, foamy, fleecy side um, on each side of the foam. So I've put my exterior fabric on. So that's my, I'm using my base piece, but you'll do this for your base, your side gussets, and your main panels. And then I'm just gonna give that a little steam and I'm not fusing this because there's no glue on this at all. I'm not fusing it. I'm just helping those little fluffy fibers either side of the foam just to rise up. Um, and they sort of grip a little bit onto that exterior fabric. Like that doesn't move around very much now. Um, now that I've sort of puffed up those little, little fibers. So I haven't glued it on, but I have helped it to not slide around so much because of just a little bit of steam. I'm gonna pop a few pins in. What I like to do is pin one corner and then smooth out into the opposite corner and pin on that opposite corner there. And then the same for the other two. So we're sort of going in a bit of a diagonal across the panel just to keep that nice and taut. Do that bottom corner as well. So the same if you're doing your main panels. So pin one corner, smooth away in the opposite direction, diagonally, pin that corner, and then do the same in the other two. Now we're gonna baste at a quarter of an inch. So change your stitch length to the longest stitch length that you've got. Um, and I've set up my machine, have I? Um, I don't think I've pulled my bobbin thread through. Oh, I have. Right, I've set up ready. It was a good 10 minutes ago, so <laughs> who, who remembers that? Okay, now we're going to sew around all four edges a quarter of an inch, that's six millimetres away from the edge. And that'll mean we're inside the seam allowance, but we've got enough that we can trim off then as well. So go all the way around all four edges. So I start with my needle down and as I get to the corner then I can stop with my needle down, lift up my presser foot and pivot, turn it around, put my presser foot back down again and keep sewing so you don't lose your place then.
Right, you don't need to back stitch at the start or the end of this one, it's just basting, just to hold that in place. So don't panic too much. I'll take the pins out. And this is the same way you'll do this for your main panels, your side gussets, and your base for your exterior. And then flip it over, and we're gonna trim away this excess foam away from the seam allowance. Let me swap piece so you can see a bit of a closer view. So all I'm gonna do is flip it over, lay it down, and pull this extra foam back. And then with my scissors, kind of horizontal-ish, I can trim away this extra foam here. Um, all the way to the corner, and I'm gonna do this all the way around on all four edges. Just trim away that excess, and that'll just help reduce the bulk inside your bag. Helps your seams sit flatter. Um, it makes it a little bit easier to sew if you've got a, um, a machine that's not so good at thick layers. Struggling a bit with that one, so I'll do this end first and then I'll come back to that one. And see, I think it's probably because my scissors have got micro serrated um, blades on them, so they catch on to the foam sometimes. There we go, that's better. So now our exterior piece is nicely attached to that foam, okay? So do that for your main panels, your side gussets and your base, and then pop them to one side because we're gonna start on the lining and then we'll come back to these, but these will be ready for when you need them, okay? So pop that in my little bag there, my little project bag, uh, and my other base. Keeps everything together nice and neat then for me. Right, so now we need our lining main panel, one of our lining main panels, a zip pocket facing, a zip pocket bottom, and a zip pocket top. Now the reason that this is a contrast fabric is that when you open your zip pocket then, this is what you'll see inside, which is a nice pop of your exterior fabric, and it just gives it a little bit of interest there. So we'll start with our facing. Now, before we do anything with this zip, we're gonna steam it. So I'm gonna steam it now while I remember, and then I'll pop it to one side to cool down. So just make sure that your, your zip is fine and your teeth are not gonna melt under the um, steam iron. It should be okay, most zips are fine. Um, but if it is a little bit delicate, you can use a pressing cloth, or you can, um, you can just steam along each side of the zip tape so either side of the teeth now my zip is fine with steam so um i'm just gonna oh i haven't swapped you back hang on there we go mine is fine so i'm just gonna steam along both edges there and just to double check that it is fine open it and close it again just to be sure Great, okay, so we'll pop that with my top and my bottom. Now, on the zip pocket facing, we're gonna draw a box, and I'll use pencil so that you can see it. So grab yourself a ruler and a pencil, or chalk, or you know something else that disappears. And we're gonna draw a line. Um, let me see if you can see, yes, brilliant. And the line we're gonna draw is an inch from each short end. And do the same the other side. And half an inch from each long edge. So that's 2.5 centimeters on each short edge. And 1.2 centimeters from each long edge, if you're working in metric. Right, so we've got our nice neat box and that's the box that the zip is gonna show you through. We'll draw a line in the middle and this line in the middle is where we're gonna cut through after sewing and a little triangle at each end. And if you've not done a zip pocket before, you'll have to trust me on this one, it'll all become clear. But for those of you who have, you know where this is going. So we're gonna sew around this outside box 
and we're going to ignore this triangle and line in the middle while we're sewing and then when we cut we'll cut through those okay so we'll place this on our main panel and we need to make sure that we're lining up our centers so just fold this in half and get my center points I'm going to mark those with my pencil as well so we can all see them let me know where we're going okay uh, if I do it this way then you can see because it's facing towards you and the measurements for this are all in the pattern so don't worry too much about it just refer back to that for where it needs to be placed um, I'll put my ruler away I need my ruler again so we're going to place that uh, right okay so just use your ruler to work out where to place it and line up so it's parallel and match the center mark on your facing to where the center mark is on your lining main panel and then we're going to pin that at each edge just to hold it in place I'm using rather chunky pins today and they like to distort my fabric so I'm trying to be really really careful not to move it while I pin it now we're going to sew around this entire box now I recommend going down to a two and a half or a two stitch length and we're going to start around about here-ish on the top so all the way around and back to there and then if you want to over stitch by a couple of stitches it won't be so noticeable in that little place there that's what I'm going to do so again I'm starting with my needle down now as you approach the corners if you think you're not going to be able to get quite into the corner using that stitch length change your stitch length down to a smaller stitch length maybe a one or something so you can get right in neat and accurate into those corners Right, so I've overstitched slightly where I started so that I've got a little bit of back stitching, but it's not really bulky. Now, first thing we're going to do, take these pins out and we'll give this a nice steam press just to set those stitches in place um, where we want them. We'll just give that a little shot of steam. Okay. Now, what you can do, you've got a choice here, you can either cut first and then steam or you can steam and then cut um, let's see what it says in here it says to oh it says to steam and then cut so that's what I'll do so that I'm showing you um, what it is I'll show you here first so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this up and press steam press against the bottom edge of there and then we're gonna pull this down and steam press against the top edge of that box and then again for each side Okay, so you'll end up with a rather um, wrinkly, sticking up piece, but that's how we want it, so don't panic too much. So, press against the bottom and just push it up away from the line and main panel. And then do the same on the top, and I'm using a lot of steam here. I think steam gives you a really lovely finish on your bag, so if you want a nice neat finish to your zip pocket, steam is the key 
So I'm doing each edge then, each side edge. There we go. So as you can see, it's all kind of sticking up a bit, a bit wildly there. And we are now going to cut through that middle line. Now, I wonder if I've forgotten my knife. I have forgotten my knife, so I'm going to do this the risky way. Okay, so don't try this at home if you are risk averse. I'll swap you through to the close view so you can see what I'm doing. Right, we are going to put a pin in each end of the box. So directly where our stitches are. Okay. And then I'm going to use my seam ripper to start off this box. Okay, now this is risky because if you go too far, you could rip your whole fabric. So just put the end, the point in just a gentle little push just to create that hole okay so that's got started off very well if you've got a knife a craft knife use a craft knife okay <laughs> don't do the risky way and then you can pop your scissors in and we'll snip to the end of the line and then into each arm of that triangle okay get as close as you can to stitches without going through the stitches and that is where that pin will come come in handy because it's stopped us going through the stitches at the end so we'll do the same the other end so we'll snip all the way up that center line and then into each arm of the triangle okay now just double check that i've gone as far as i can yeah i said this is slightly riskier than using a knife so decide how risky you're feeling and go for that way okay right i think we're all right so we're oh hang on i haven't quite quite swapped is that better yeah i was kind of in limbo then um right so now we're going to push this through to the wrong side and give it a good press so what I like to do is just do one section at a time so do the bottom section and finger roll it into place and give it a little steam press and then do a bit more and then a bit more and then a bit more okay now it is inevitable that you will probably get some puckers with a zip pocket if you're doing this method where you um, do a facing or even the, um, the zip pocket panel itself and then push it through you're gonna get wrinkles if you press from the right side though any wrinkles that you do get will be hidden inside so that's why I always press from the right side first before pressing from the wrong side okay it's a little top tip for you so if your pattern doesn't say to do that do that okay you can use it on any pattern that you've got anything that you're pushing through so if you sew cut a hole or a slit push it through and press you can do that on so press from the right side and then any wrinkles or you know odd bits will all be hidden inside if people could see inside our bags it'd be a different matter but they can't so we'll hide everything inside so just go all the way around that box all four sides giving it a nice press right that looks really beautifully neat from the right side i'll just give it a little press from the wrong side actually it doesn't look too bad from the wrong side so maybe the risky way is the better way right so i've got on the right side just a nice neat box and a stray thread and then on the wrong side i've got my nice neat box on just as a facing okay so that can be put to one side for the minute and we'll work on our pocket. Now I'm going to follow the pattern for this so I don't tell you the wrong thing because um, that would not be great. So we need our zip pocket bottom. Just, yep, yeah, great. Okay, so in the pattern that is on with diamond fabric, in my video, this is my zip pocket bottom. It's my lining fabric. Okay, we're going to add a line of double sided tape. 
and we're going to add it to the upper edge so if you've got directional fabric add it to the top of your fabric so your design is the right way so the upper edge now mine is not directional which is not intentional but it's a happy happy accident as it means I don't have to worry about directions but if yours is directional then add it to the upper edge and then we are going to add the zip on top. Uh, hang on, let me turn this around so it's the right way to me. Okay. So, so add your zip to the top edge with the zip pull on the right. So turn it around so it's the right way to you. Okay, so that's how it should be. So this, if my fabric was directional, this would be, you know, if I had little trees or anything, this would be the top of the trees, this would be the bottom of the trees. And then we've added our zip on top. Now we're going to sew along there using a quarter of an inch seam allowance or a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance, a kind of a four or five mil if you're working in metric all the way along. And I'm just going to whiz along there. we're going to fold it over to the wrong side and give it a little press so where your tape is just make sure that you're not pulling it so far back that your tape is visible but just enough that um, you can it doesn't get caught in the zip as you're opening it so flip that over to the wrong side and give it a little press and then press from the right side of the fabric. So you should have the wrong side of your zip on the right side of your fabric, which I know feels wrong and it feels a bit um, a bit odd, but that, that's how it's meant to be, so don't panic. Okay. And there we go. So we've got our right side of our zip on the wrong side of our fabric that's got the interfacing on. And then on the other side, we've got the wrong side of the zip and the right side of the fabric. Now my zip pocket top is directional so i'm gonna need to follow the directions for this okay so it says add a line of double-sided base tape to the upper edge now my fabric this is the top edge of my fabric so i'm going to add the tape to this top edge here so i'll do it as though i'm um as though you are me so that you can see okay and then turn it 180 degrees so that the top is on the bottom and then we're going to add this zip on top so again the zip is right sides up but the zip pocket bottom is right sides together with the zip pocket top okay so line up the edges and if you're confused by my description just follow the pattern it's got it all okay so from my point of view let me check that that fit yep so my zip pull is on the right attached to the top of my directional fabric okay and from your point of view that's like that okay now we're going to do exactly the same so along the entire top using a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance or four or five mil. Now you can swap to your zip for obviously um, for this, but I don't find I need to um, because I'm not sewing too close to the zip. So we open that out and give that a little press as well. So we're just pressing the fabric away from the zip and that will stop the fabric getting caught in the zip when you're opening and closing your zip pocket. There's nothing worse than it getting caught, is there? Oh my goodness, so frustrating. Um, but because you're sewing this bag yourself, you can make sure that that doesn't happen because you know the tips and the tricks. We'll just make sure that that's nicely pressed open. So I'll do both sides. 
Now let's have a little look. I'll change you to the close view so that you can see how this should look um, from both directions. Okay, so from your point of view, this is the top and this is the bottom. So this is zip pocket top, zip pocket bottom. And my wrong side of my fabric, my interface, interface side of the fabric is on the same side as the right side of the zip. Okay, so we'll turn that over and there's my top, which has got nice fabric, and my bottom, which is my lining fabric. I'm not saying my lining fabric's not nice, but that's, the, that's my contrast fabric, that's my interest fabric. And then the wrong side of my zip is showing there. Now we need our main panel with facing attached that we did earlier, and we're going to add some tape to the top and the bottom of this facing, and do it as close to the edge as you can get it without it peeking through. And we add it to the facing rather than the zip so that we can ensure that it's definitely, definitely not showing through that gap at any point. We know exactly where it is because it's on the back of our facing so it's not going to be shown. Um, although this tape is wash away anyway so if you get a bit stuck you can always just add a little bit of water and it will peel away then. Right, so we'll take the backing off the tape. Now we need to remember that this is our top, so that is the bit that we're going to add facing the top of our main panel. And you can add it, add your zip pocket like this if you like, so that you can line up the edges. And when you think, yeah, that looks about right and kind of even on the bottom, flip it over and just double check that it's even through that gap. Mine is not, so I'm just going to give it a little, little wriggle. And just lift up the edges of the main panel there and just manipulate that into place. Okay, like that. Okay, so now my zip is nicely positioned in that gap, and this is my zip pocket top poking out of the top of there. Now I'm going to top stitch this into place and I'm going to start in this bottom corner here. And so all the way around, or all the way around that way, yeah, I'll start there and go all the way around this way. I'm not going to backstitch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my threads long and then pull them through to the back at the end and tie them off. And that will leave a really nice, neat finish. Okay, but the same as we did here. So we start with our needle down, sew to the corner and leave our needle down, but lift the presser foot, pivot, put the press foot back down again and keep sewing and do the same all the way around. If you think you're not going to be able to get a nice neat corner on each, finish on each corner, then reduce your stitch length right down as far as you can go, maybe a number one um, or smaller. Get right into that corner in a nice neat finish and then keep going along and you can change back up again then. It won't be noticeable at all. Okay, so make sure that your zip pocket pieces are flat underneath and pop the whole panel under your presser foot. Okay, now again, you can swap to your zip foot for this if you want. I've got quite a narrow walking foot, so I tend to just leave mine on. I'm very lazy about changing my feet. <laughs> right, so we'll just get started. Now, as you can see, I've come up to this zip pull here. So I'm leaving my needle down, lifting my presser foot, and I'm just pulling that zip pull out of the way to the back there so that I can keep going and I can sew this top section. Then when I come back to it, I can do the same and move that zip pull again.
Right, so I haven't snipped my threads yet. Just pulled those out long. I'm gonna flip over to the back and pull. I'm afraid, I don't think you'll be able to see this very well because I'm using a white thread, which is poor plan on my part, I do apologize. I'm just getting a pin into that. As you pull the back thread, it kind of pulls the front one through in a little loop. And if you get a pin into that loop, you can then pull the thread through to the back. Or if you've got a hand needle, um, you can just thread the thread onto the hand needle and pull that through as well. Okay. So all I'm going to do is just tie these off. And fortunately, my thread hides really well. Well, fortunately for my finished bag, my thread hides really well. Unfortunately for you, trying to see where I'm tying it off, not so well. Okay. So now we're going to pull this. Uh, let's move our zip pull to the middle first before we do this. And then we're going to pull this top zip pocket top down to meet the bottom edge of the zip pocket bottom and there's a little bit of a fold there and that's fine that just means that your pocket will have a bit of body if it comes down completely flat you will struggle to get things in and out of your pocket because there'll be no no space there okay now let's make sure to leave a turning gap in the bottom of this pocket I'm just going to add some extra pins to remind me. And I like to do a double pin to remind me to stop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to baste across this turning gap so that when we come to finish the bag, we've got a really nice, neat finish. So I will start sewing at the top corner, one of these top corners here using my regular stitch length I don't think my pin can go through my zip there we go so I'll start sewing my regular stitch length and I'll back stitch at the start and I'm going to sew down to the corner pivot and to the start of that turning gap and then I'll back stitch again there then I'm going to change my stitch length to a really long basting stitch and I'm going to stitch across that turning gap until I get to the other end then I'll change my stitch length back down to its small stitch length, the regular stitch length, back stitch a bit there, go to the corner pivot and come right the way back up to the top, and back stitch at the end there as well. Okay, so in the end we'll have, and you're not sewing through these layers, just purely the pocket layers. So you can either do it like this and fold these back, or you can do it from this side and fold it back. So we'll end up with nicely stitched sides with our regular stitch length and then this gap in between sewn just with a really long basting stitch so um, I think I'll stitch this way because I think it'll be easier for you to see so I'm going to back stitch at the start and the end Now I've changed my stitch length to my longest stitch length and I'm going to sew across this turning gap. Okay, now I'm going back down to my regular stitch length and I'm going to back stitch at the end of that turning gap. Okay, and lift that, turn. All right, so we'll take our pins out, and that is our zip pocket done. Now you can steam these stitches later if you want. I'm gonna steam them now so that I know they're definitely steamed and I'll probably forget that I've steamed them and steam them again later and that's fine. <laughs> Double steaming is better than no steaming. So 
all I'm going to do is just pull this pocket panel out and just give those a little steam so that I know when I remove those later it will leave behind little stitch holes from where I've sewn and then when I come to turn my uh, close my turning gap I can turn those seam allowances under and they'll go naturally um, along those stitch lines or those stitch holes that's really nice okay so we we'll double check our pocket works and have a little look inside your pocket and oh, that's our nice fabric in there our nice exterior fabric and let me double check i've got it the right way up yes phew good okay so that is our zip pocket and that pa that panel piece is done you can put that to one side unless you want to add anything else onto it now we're going to sew the slip pocket the lining slip pocket so we will need another lining main panel so that's our second lining main panel and two lining slip pockets and this is dead easy all you do is you place one on top of the other right sides together matching up all the curves and the raw edges and my we're ignoring my wonky bit of cutting here by the way <laughs> actually i'm going to swap over to clips because i think i've cut my uh, i think i've chosen some pins that are very very blunt so all we're going to do is we're going to sew along this curve, this top curve, using our regular seam allowance, which is three eighths of an inch or one centimetre, all the way along, back stitch at the start and the end. So we'll use our regular stitch length. Now we need to, um, if you've got pinking shears, use your pinking shears to trim this seam allowance. If you haven't, then clip into that seam allowance all the way along. And that means that when we turn it through and press it, it will just help the seam allowance to spread out nicely um, and not pucker or wrinkle or anything. All I'm doing is just trimming along this seam allowance with my pinking shears. Not cutting through the stitches just the seam allowance all the way along okay pop those in my little bin and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn this right sides out so wrong sides together and give it a nice press now it looks slightly odd when you first do this i know it doesn't look right so if you <laughs> Fold it over and match the bottom edges and you can add a little clip or a pin if you want to. Just hold it in place for the minute. Um, you don't want those all the time. Um, and then you can just use your fingers to roll out this seam at the top like that. Okay, and that just helps, helps to pull that out a little bit. And then we give that a nice steam press and it holds it into place. So I'll do that, I'll move my so you can see a little bit what we're doing here so just run your fingers along that seam from the inside and that will help push that curve out nice and neat okay see the difference from one side where we haven't pressed to the other side where we have so same with this side just run your fingers along that seam from the inside and that just pushes all of those seam allowances out nice and neat in fact i think i might have missed a little bit there so i'll just use my fingers to roll that seam and get those turned out nice and neat okay right so now that that's nice and neat decide which side you want as your right side and which side you want inside the pocket and then we're going to top stitch um, an eighth of an inch away from the edge. So that's three mil for those working in metric. Now there's no need to back stitch at the start and the end of this one because it's going into a seam.
Now, if you're a bit nervous about sewing round curves, change your stitch length to be slightly shorter because it won't go um, all skewiffy as you go round this um, curve then. I'll give that a little press because I've taken my clips out now. And um, I, if you've got a speed limiter on your machine, I would turn it right the way down to the slowest speed um, and then floor it. So put your foot all the way to the floor, um, but your machine on slowest speed that it can go and that will help you go really nice and neat around the curve. Okay, so we need our main panel that we've got and this is the one without the zip pocket attached. Pop my little labels to one side. And we're going to place this zip, uh, this slip pocket, sorry, on top, matching up all of the curves. Now my cutting out is terribly wonky, so I would appreciate if we could all just keep that to ourselves. But I'm going to match up my bottom curves, and I'm going to baste it into place, and then I'll trim it afterwards so that nobody will know. And it'll all be fine. I think the problem is I was cutting out two bags in one go. And that's never a good idea because you get so many layers, <laughs> kind of goes a bit wonky. And then you risk your gusset not fitting. So um, there is a very real possibility that we'll get to that point and I'll be regretting cutting two in one. But I was, I was excited. I wanted one of these for myself. So. Right, so we're just going to baste that into place all the way around the edges, just using our longest stitch. If you think you're not going to remember to change your stitch length back down again, then leave it at your regular stitch length. That's fine. Um, I have done that before. I've forgotten. Okay. Right, so now we've got the choice of either leaving that pocket as full width or dividing it down the middle. I'm going to divide it down the middle because that's what the pattern suggests. Um, but all you do is fold it in half to find your middles again. And give those a little mark. And the same at the top. And then using a ruler and probably not my pencil, I'll use my chalk and then I can um, then I can rub it out afterwards. So just draw a line between those two centre marks from the top to the bottom of the pocket. Now when I sew a um, divider like this or a dividing line, what I like to do is I like to start at the bottom and do a little back stitch. Sew all the way to the top and do a little back stitch, and then turn around and sew back down again. So you get two lines of stitching and some back stitching at the top and the bottom. Because I found that my husband, when he puts anything in my bags, he thrusts things into the pockets with the full force and his full strength, and then it can tear a little bit there. So, um, what I do is I just add a bit of extra stitching just to protect against that. Um, because I know that that's how he he just does everything with full power <laughs> oh remember to change your stitch length back down to the regular stitch length good reminder there Now maybe this is overboard, but I do like to give those stitches just a little bit of a steam press, just to help them settle in. <laughs> I think I've just got a bit too used to the steam pressing that now I, I feel I have to do it with everything. <laughs> 
Right, so we've got our um, slip pocket side and we've got our zip pocket side. So we've got our two pieces of our lining prepared and we can put those to one side and start on the exterior of the bag. Okay, so I'll do that. Um, I'm just gonna pause you for a minute while I get all of the pieces for the exterior and then we'll get stirring. Right, so we're gonna do our exterior pockets now. So you'll need your exterior main panel and these are the ones that we've got foam stabilizer on. You'll need a exterior slip pocket and a lining slip pocket. Well, you'll need two of each of those, but we're just gonna use one for the minute. You'll also need half of a zip for your piping, or you can use piping. Um, now, I've got my half of a zip here, but I thought I'd just show you. All you need to do, if you're using continuous zip, then you're probably comfortable with your halves. If not, and you've got a ready-made zip, all you need to do is just snip off the top and the bottom okay pull your zip pull off which actually i've lost my zip pull for this one and then pull these teeth apart I'll probably do it from this end okay so just pull those two sides of the zip apart completely and then you can use that as two separate pieces of piping now i've got some with gold teeth on um, because my fabric's got gold in it so i thought that'd be really nice before we get started on this, and this is how you're gonna get a not wavy zip, we're gonna steam this zip tape, okay? I feel like this whole video is me telling you to steam things, which it is. So <laughs> just give that a nice steam, and that means, that, see, quite often, I don't understand why really, but zip tape tends to shrink. But the teeth, where the teeth are, doesn't. So when you insert a zip and then you press the fabric afterwards, it kind of shrinks the zip slightly and you end up with a wavy zip and that's no good at all. Right, so just give that a little steam press and then just well, flat-ish, as flat as it can be really. Now we're gonna trim this down so that the tape for the zip is our seam allowance which is three eighths of an inch so my tape is half an inch so I need to trim an eighth of an inch off of this zip tape let me swap you to the close view so you can see see what I'm doing because I understand this is probably a little bit scary so here's my zip tape and that tape measures a half an inch so I'm going to line up the ruler at an eighth of an inch away from the edge so that I've only got a small very very small amount of zip under that ruler and it lines up with the eighth of an inch mark on my ruler and then just give it a nice little trim and try not to disturb it too much and I'll do this last little end. My zip is longer than my ruler. Just trim again, okay. So now the seam allowance on my zip tape, on my zip tape is three eighths of an inch, one centimeter, rather than a half an inch or 1.2 centimeters, okay. Um, now I'll leave you this view if that's okay and we'll um, get our pocket piece so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. You probably want to mark the centre of this again, same as we did before. Uh, I need my pencil and I'll just mark the centre there. Oh, I might have already marked that before actually. It's not seen because of the print on the fabric, so I'll use a pin just to indicate where the centre is. And yeah, I think that's the centre there. Yeah, so I have marked that before actually. That's fine. Right, now we're going to add a bit of double sided tape along that top curve. And if you find that your tape is not curving so well, 
feel free to do it in little bits. So just do a little bit and snip it a little bit more, snip it all the way along. Okay, I'm finding that I can. My fabric's a little bit stiffer maybe because it's a canvas this time. So I'm finding it doesn't, the fabric doesn't move, but the tape does bend around that curve. So that's nice and be nice and neat finish there. Actually, don't put that tape away. We'll need that again. So we'll take the backing off the tape. And actually, the actual tape curves quite nicely. It's this paper that doesn't bend so well. We'll find the centre of our zip. Although this zip is slightly longer, so it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you've got enough to go all the way around. Now we're going to line up the raw edge of the zip tape with the raw edge of the fabric. Give it a little, a slight, very, very slight tug as you're pressing it on, and that will help manipulate it into place there. Okay, so just bend that round the curve, tug it slightly into place. And if you're not confident that this is going to stay in place while you sew it, add a few clips as well. That doesn't hurt to add a few clips. Just smoothing that along to make sure that that's nice and in place. Now we're going to baste this into place using a, um, well we could use an eight, three eighths of an inch seam allowance actually. That would be fine. I've swapped to a navy thread so hopefully you should be able to see it a little bit better. So I'm going to sew as close as I can to these teeth without sewing on the teeth. And I am going to backstitch just to be sure that that stays in place. All right, now I'm going to double check that I haven't gone through any of those teeth because I feel like I maybe did. And there it looks okay. Just want to double check before I so the next bit on no that's fine okay okay phew that was a close one okay so now we can lose that pin can't we we've done our centers now we can add the lining panel onto there so get your pocket lining and we'll add again we're going to add some tape to that raw edge there side of the zip. Now don't worry too much about this zip frame because um, you're not going to be using it as a zip. It's purely decorative. It's being held in by three rows of stitching actually. So this zip is not going anywhere. You probably wouldn't want to fray, uh, you would probably wouldn't want to trim a zip um, on a top zip or you know a functional zip in case it frayed and then the zip failed you had to replace the zip afterwards but in this case we're only using its piping so we're okay right so line up your um, lining with your exterior and just press that into place along that top raw edge and just use your fingers to make sure that that's nicely in place turn it over and check you're all lined up yep Great. Again, you can add a couple of clips if you want to, just to make sure that that's being held in place. Now, I am going to sew from this side because I've got my line of stitching to follow there, haven't I? So if you feel more comfortable stitching from this side, go ahead and do that, okay? So again, I'm gonna sew as close as I can to the teeth without going on them. Right, let's have a little look at that from the right side before we do anything else. So pull these out, let's have a look. Looks fine to me. Let me just swap you over to the other view because you can't really see much from that view, can you? That looks fine. That looks 
looks fine. Okay, great. So once you're happy with what you've done, you can give that a trim again with the pinking shears or clip your seams if you haven't got pinking shears. Um, I'm just going to help the seam to sit uh, nice and flat once we turn it through. So just do little snips to make sure you don't go through your stitching. I'm going to go all the way round. And then, you guessed it, we're going to give it a little steam, little steam press to help it sit nice and flat. Now your zip is too long for the um, zip pockets, so just give that a little trim. You can wait until after you've steam pressed if you prefer to. Um, and then again, exactly the same as we did before, so we'll just fold it back match up the bottom edges so it's the same as the lining pocket really except you've got this bit of zip poking out the top as piping um, or you might have used actual piping which would also be really lovely so this one you don't seem to need to put your hand in and press along the seam as much because that zip piping um, sort of almost wants to sit out um, against the the pocket fabrics so just make sure that um, in the back there your lining fabric is pressed nicely down um, just for a neat finish really because this is not a functional zip is it so we don't have to worry too much about um, the lining getting caught this time we just want it to look nice um, and we'll make sure that our top corners are pulled out nice nicely um, so that you get a nice full curve on the front of the bag there right so I've done my top curve I'm just going to press the rest of it now to make sure that that's all sitting nice and where it should And then we need one of our main panels, which has got the foam attached. And then we'll place that on top. So again, lining up the bottom corners there and the bottom raw edge. So I'll clip the bits that match perfectly and then um, pretend that the other bits don't exist. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> so these this side matches perfectly so i clip that easy and then this side i'm just smoothing out and that does help it to sit into place and then we're going to baste around the outside of this just to attach this pocket piece onto our main panel so use your long stitch length and just go all the way around you don't have to backstitch i tend to backstitch on pockets like this just to give it a little bit of extra strength in those top corners for the pockets um, you don't have to but i just think it gives me a little bit of added strength there Should have said we were basing that within the seam allowance so at a quarter of an inch six mil if you're metric okay bits of fluff right so you could leave your panel like that with one large slip pocket and that is completely fine if that's how you are going to use your um pocket then have it like that that's fine if not and you want to divide it then what we do is, um, so we've got our centres marked on the pocket, but we haven't got them marked on the um, on the main panel. So let me mark that on the main panel, just so we know where we are. 
and we're going to draw from the bottom line up the centers let me swap you over to the other view okay so we're going to draw from the bottom nearly to the top we're going to stop about half an inch away from the top so what i like to do is i like to line up based on my center marks and then from there mark maybe with a pin if you can get it through um, i'm sure you've got better pins than i have at the moment where that half an inch is away from the top okay so it's just there so it's half an inch down from the top then the line that we draw to divide our pocket um, i'll use my chalk pen for this and then i can wash it out afterwards so we're going from the bottom to that mark that we just made half an inch 1.2 centimetres from the top. Okay, you see that? Oh dear, I lost my lid. Never mind. <laughs> Be a job for me later. So now, again, as we did for the lining, I like to start at the bottom, back stitch, stitch up to, I'm going to stitch up to that pin where I've marked it, back stitch couple and pivot all the way down. So this top, very, very top edge will be loose and we can add a rivet into there. If you don't want to add a rivet into there, then sew all the way up to the top of the pocket and back down again, okay? If you would like to add a rivet, then leave that top half inch with no stitching on, okay? So I'm gonna start again at the bottom. I'm changing my stitch length back down to my regular stitch length. Right, lovely. So that is nicely divided up the centre with a little gap missing for a rivet hole. So I need to get now my tools for punching a hole and setting a rivet. So if you're using rivets, um, pause me now, go and get your rivet tools and then we'll come back and we'll do that rivet, okay? Right, I've got my... Um, board that I set rivets on and my hand tools. Unfortunately, this rivet is too far in to use my rivet press. So we're going to use the hammer and the hand tools. So I'll take my pin out. And if you want to mark where that center is to punch your hole, then do. If you want to use one of your caps from your rivets, maybe to just make a little indent there just to give you a little bit of a clue as to where you're punching a hole. And then I've got my hand punch here ready to go straight in afterwards. There we go, so I know I'm in the right place. And just double check that that's lined up nicely with your stitching to divide the pocket. We give it a few whacks. Oh, that might've been a few whacks too many, mightn't it? <laughs> Add a dab of fray check. Now, if you're a little bit concerned about setting rivets or you want some more advice or some tips, then check out my rivet masterclass video, which we've got um, on my YouTube channel, which will give you um, a lot more information about setting rivets and all the different tools. So I'm using, um, I'm using Emmeline medium rivets. So I'm gonna push one through from the right side and check if that's too gappy. Um, I think that is a little bit too gappy. I've got quite a lot of posts left over. So I'm just gonna grab some scraps. I've got some scraps of um, foam here from earlier. Just gonna cut a couple, I think. And I'll punch holes for those. I haven't got my hand punch up here because um, 
I thought I was only going to be using my, um, you know, setting rivets in the middle. Just punch a couple of holes through those and then add those to the back of the post just to take up some of the excess slack. Okay. And then add a cap on top. Okay, so I'm going to set from the right side so that if I get any dinks or dents or anything, they're hidden on the underside, just in case I don't put it in the anvil properly. Um, I'm sure I will be perfect at setting this rivet, but just in case I'm not, I'm prepared for that by doing it on the back. Okay. So then with my tool straight up, I'm just going to set this with the rivet, uh, with a hammer. Right, that's fine. There's no movement in that at all, so that's okay. Now I'm going to set the rivet on my second panel as well at the same time. So my second panel is exactly the same as my first panel with my pockets. Um, my zip, my pocket, and I've left a little gap at the top there. So again, I'll use a cap and just mark where that's going to go. Just make sure it looks nice and even. Okay. And then I can punch my hole. So we'll end up with two panels exactly the same. If you want to add a label to one panel, you can do the um, measurements for where to place that up in the pattern. I'm not going to add one to this um, this bag because not everybody add, likes adding label um, and they sometimes add a little bit of cost. If you're making to sell, they do add a little bit of extra cost sometimes, don't they? So we'll do the same again. So I'm going to push through from the front. Now I'm guessing that this will need two layers of extra foam as well because it's exactly the same layers as I had on my first panel. So I'll just add that. Add those just to take up a little bit of the extra um, post and help it set well and pop my cap on okay so I'll set this exactly the same as I did the last one my anvil on the bottom if you do need some more help with rivets because I haven't really gone into them at all here do go on to my uh, rivet masterclass right great Okay, so I've got my two pocket panels with my zips and my rivets attached. Let me swap you back to the front. Okay, so I'll put these to one side and then we'll review what we've got, where we're up to so far, because we are nearly ready to start construction and that's when it gets a bit exciting. You start to see how your bag is gonna look when it's finished then. I'll put my board down. My mother's chopping board that I pinched one year and she um, she very graciously hasn't mentioned it since. <laughs> right, so what we've got now, we've got two lining panels with pockets attached. We've got two oops, main panels with pockets attached and rivets and zip piping. Look very nice. We can start on the gusset. So what we need next is our zip gusset pieces. And we've got two exterior with our fusible fleece attached, as we talked about earlier, and two lining pieces just with our interfacing attached. And these have been sitting in my um, project bag. So I'm just gonna give them a little press just to make sure they're all nice and flat nice and neat before we get started so we can get a nice finish and those are fine right so again we don't want a wavy zip on the top and because of the curve of this bag 
if you're going to get a wavy zip a curved bag is where it's going to be so give this zip a steam press and that will help you avoid a wavy zip I have seen some people say it's not uh, it's where you're not sewing close enough to the teeth or um, you're sewing too close or something like that actually it's probably that you didn't steam your zip so give you do yourself a favor save a headache for later give that a nice steam now I'm using continuous zip so I've um, I've actually sewn some stitches at either end just to stop my zip pull coming off because um, it's a bit of a headache when it comes off part way through construction. We can get it back on again, I'm sure, but it's a bit of a headache, so it's better not to even have to try. So just giving that a nice steam press, just to make sure that any shrinkage or any waviness is already out of there. Okay. I suspect I'm setting myself up for a fall there by saying that it's not going to create a wavy zip. But in theory, once you've steamed it, you should be fine. Right, so now we need our one exterior piece and some tape. Now, uh, my fabric is directional, so I need to decide, do I want them both facing into the middle or both facing away? So let's have a look. I think I would like them facing into the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my tape to the uh, to the side that is the bottom of my directional fabric. I'm adding it on the right sides all the way along that raw edge there. And then let's see. Now my zip is 14 inches, which is half an inch longer than the zip pocket panel and that's how it should be that's how the instructions tell you um, just so you've got a little bit extra leeway there and also it's very hard to buy a 13 and a half inch zip <laughs> so I've said to do a 14 inch zip so I'm marking the centers of my zip and I'm going to mark that on both sides and that will help us get everything nicely lined up then as we're sewing right and I can also do the same on my um, zip pockets uh, zip panels actually as well just to be sure now it doesn't show up very well on this fabric my pencil so I'll use a pin right so now we can place our zip like right size down. Let me swap you to the close view so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so my tape is on this side because I want my fabric facing in. And then place that on top, right sides down, matching my center of the zip to my center mark on my fabric. Just smooth that into place all the way along that raw edge. If you're a bit nervous of zips, you can base that into place before you go any further. Otherwise, what we're gonna do, we're gonna add another line of basting tape on the right side there. Oh, sorry, on the wrong side of our zip, all the way along that raw edge. I might have to go down and get some more tape in a minute. We're all right for this half. Okay, and then we're going to add our lining right sides down and I'll match my center again so I'll mark my centers for this so that I can match that to the center there and in theory this means that you shouldn't get any um, bits hanging on at the end it should all line up nicely okay so we're going to sew along the edge there let's see what seam allowance we're doing we're doing a three eighths of an inch seam allowance that's one centimeter i'm going to pull my zip pull a bit further down so i get a good run for the start and we're going to back stitch at the start and the end this is a um 
integral part of the bag this is so we want to make sure it's not going to come apart Sorry, I can't get it past my pin. <laughs> I've got my centre pin there, haven't I? <laughs> right, lovely. Yeah, what a silly, my centre pin. I might put my centre pin back in so that I can um, line it up on the other side when I come to it. Right, so now we're going to give that a steam press. You guessed it. So we fold these layers back. Now, if your machine struggles with layers, just go in and take that bit of fleece out of that seam allowance there. This side of the stitching, okay. So just trim that out. Um, grade those seam allowances right back. So there's nothing in there that doesn't need to be. My machine doesn't struggle, but I'm doing it just to show you um, how you can reduce a bit of bulk. It's not much, but every little helps. And then we're gonna fold this back. So your zip should be protruding and then your lining and your exterior wrong sides facing all the way along. Okay, so, oh dear, my chopping board is in the way. Or oh, my mother's chopping board. Sorry, sorry, ma'am. I'll move my iron out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm folding my lining back and then folding my exterior over to match. Pull the zip out so it's nice and proud and give that a little steam press. Okay, you can add a little clip to that as well if you're using vinyl or faux leather or something like that and you don't want to risk getting clip marks add a little scrap of fabric in between the um, prongs of the clip and they'll stop them leaving those sometimes they leave little dimples don't they right so we'll do the same so i've pulled the lining out and then pull the exterior over to match and give it a little press And then I'm adding a clip. I'm going to move my zip pull down slightly so that I can grab hold of this without worrying about the zip pull getting caught under the iron. And do the same again. So match those raw edges of the exterior and the lining and make sure that the zip teeth are pulled out nice and proud. Okay, so we're going to top stitch along the edge of the zip now. Just hold all of those layers in place. So I'll swap you back to the machine. And we're going to sew with an eighth of an inch seam allowance away from this edge of the fabric. Okay. Again, you can swap to your zip foot for this if you need to. Um, I'm just very lazy. <laughs> So that's three mil if you're in metric. Right, there we go. So that's half of our zip done. All we need to do is add the second half. Now I need to pause you while I go and get some more tape because I've run out and then I'll come back and we'll do that second half. 
Right, so let's do the second side. Now I've got some more tape. So again, I'm going to mark the centres of my pieces, my exterior and my lining, just before we get started. Oh, again, can be seen on my fabric. I'll use a pin instead. And I'm pinning on the side that's not having the zip, just so I don't have to remove it part way through. And then same on my lining. Mark that centre. And I've already got the centre marked on my zip already. So all we're going to do, now I want my centres to go into the middle. So I'm adding my tape onto the bottom of my directional fabric. Um, snip that bit off, that's not, not very sticky, that bit. Find that if you have tape stored away and don't use it for a while, it does lose its stickiness, doesn't it? Right, so I've added that along the whole length of the bottom of my exterior zip panel or exterior zip gusset. And then we'll add this zip and try to pretend that this piece doesn't even exist. It's just the um, just the zip on its own as it was before. And we'll add our zip tape right sides down and we're matching raw edges as we did before and you can leave this zipped closed or zipped open your choice doesn't really matter and then another line of tape as I said before if you feel more comfortable basting that half into place before we add the line in then go ahead and do that don't panic too much about that And then we'll add the lining right sides down on top. So that you're sandwiching that zip in between the two layers. Okay, again, matching centers and draw edges. Just smooth it along. Make sure that they do sort of match up on each end and they should do. So what we've got here, we've got our right side of our lining is matching the right side of the lining on this half and the wrong side of the zip and then here we've got the right side of our exteriors and the right side of the zip so we're just going to sew along there exactly the same as we did before the same seam allowance three eighths of an inch or one centimeter back stitch at the start and the end to get my zip pull out so I'll just pull that out move my zip pull and then I'm going to start stitching again where I've pulled it out there okay so don't panic too much if you have the same and you can't get your zip pull out of the way just lift the needle pull the whole panel out, move your zip pull out of the way and then um, and then you can go back to it. Just start stitching, maybe a stitch or two over what you've already stitched, just to hold it in place. Right, so let's check that. That looks fine. Okay, doesn't look fine, it looks great. <laughs> it looks brilliant. <laughs> right, so we'll press this side and top stitch it and then we'll get on to actually making our bag. Now that we've got all the bits and pieces um, mostly ready, 
Okay, so I just press this, give it a good steam press, exactly the same as I did before. And because I'm using canvas, I'll use some clips to hold it in place. I haven't trimmed this side, so it'll be interesting to see if there's a difference between one side and the other, because I trimmed the other side, didn't I? I trimmed the fusible fleece off. So I just finished pressing this last bit. Okay. Right. Now, I think I've missed a step there. Uh, based along each long edge to keep the layers together. Now, I only made one of these the other day, so I should remember that, shouldn't I? So what we're going to do, and it seems counterintuitive because we are then going to snip into these stitches, but we're going to baste along these long edges to keep them all together. Okay, so we're going to baste all the way down there. And we are going to baste at, I think we're going to baste at a quarter of an inch, but let me double check before I tell you that. Uh, yeah, quarter of an inch, just to keep those layers together. We'll do the other side as well. Right now we are going to make a mark at um, three eighths of an inch in from each short end. Let me turn to that. So that is step 24 we're on now, if you're following along. So I like to do it on the back, on the lining side, and we're going to make a mark three eighths of an inch in. That's one centimetre. Let's swap you over again so you can see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, you can see that, and that's fine. Okay. So just place your ruler three eighths of an inch in. I'm just going to make a mark there and that is going to tell us when to start and stop sewing when we add the main panels onto this zip panel. Now if your ends are not quite lined up either give them a trim or um, sort of line them up as best as you can when you do this. Okay, now we are going to snip in between these two marks. Okay, so in between that mark there and that mark there, we are going to snip into the seam allowance. And make sure you don't go further than the quarter of an inch, but we're going to snip all the way along there. And it's a little bit tedious, so um, put on some music or something and just snip all the way in along there. And then we do the same on that side as well so both sides will have nice snips all the way in just every couple of mil all the way along and this is going to help this to curve around our top curve of our bag nicely okay Right now, if you watched that and you thought, I'm not going to do that because that looks really boring. It was really boring, but it's well worth doing because you will not get as neat a finish. So all the way along both of those edges, I've got these little snips, okay? And that will help that just curve really nice and neat, okay? So if you didn't do it because it looks boring, go back and do it because you'll regret not doing it, okay? So, 
now we need our panels now if you've put a label on um, one of your sides then you probably want that to be the front so just have a think about where you're going to carry it which side you're going to carry it where you want your zip so if you say for example you want this as your front of your bag and you're going to carry it on this shoulder maybe then think about whether you want the zip pull here at the front or at the back or if you like to carry your bag on your left side then whether you want the zip pull at the front or the back whichever way you want it so I'm going to do this as the front of my bag and I want the zip pull to be here at the front when I'm carrying it on my right hand side so I'm going to have my zip panel like this with the zip pull to this side of my main panel okay so zip pull on that side and this is my front panel so that when I wear my bag the zip pull is going to be on the front okay so I'm going to put that one to one side now this is going to be my front so now you need to decide which of your um, lining panels you want to be the front the one with the zip pocket or the one with the slip pocket I'm going to use the one with the slip pocket so I'm going to hang on to that one okay so we've got our exterior and our lining and our zip now to make sure that this is facing the right way once you've worked it out keep it that way until you pin it okay now we're going to match our centers together first before we do anything else so I've matched the center of my zip panel to the center of my main panel and then I'm going to match the ends so that end first and then that end first and yeah it does kind of bend a bit weirdly there's, you know no no pretending it doesn't it does bend a little bit oddly okay so now because we've cut these snips into the seam allowance we should be able to manipulate this to follow the curve of that main panel so that's what we're going to do we're just going to manipulate that into place along and you shouldn't need too much pulling into place because you've done all those lovely little snips so for me literally all I needed to do was just flatten that and then we could do this side as well Now, if you love hand basting, then the next bit is for you. If you don't love hand basting, then just use the machine like me. Okay. So if you find that your zip gusset is slightly longer than your main panel, that's okay. But just even it out. So on this side is slightly longer for me. So I've evened it out and then I'm going to mark three eighths of an inch from where the end of my main panel is onto my zip panel because that's where I'm going to start and stop sewing remember so let's just take my clip off and that doesn't help at all does it and a pin if I can get it through my layers yeah okay so now on here I can mark so the edge of my zip panel comes to there on my main panel and I can mark where three eighths of an inch is. It doesn't matter if your zip panel is slightly too long, as long as you stop, start and stop sewing at three eighths of an inch away from the edge. It's fine, it doesn't matter. Now you will find that this sits a little bit easier if you unzip it, okay? Because you've only got the one layer to contend with then. Now we're going to baste this top edge into place so you've got your zip gusset both layers of your zip gusset clipped or pinned into place here we're going to sew along this top edge basting it into place using our three eighths of an inch seam allowance or you could do a quarter of an inch if you're not confident that you can go over the same line twice and we're going to start and stop back stitching at start and back stitching at the end three eighths of an inch one centimeter from the end okay so start three eighths of an inch in back stitch sew to three eighths of an inch from the end back stitch and that's where we'll finish okay so i'm starting over in this 
corner and if you want to just add a little pin into that top corner to keep that in place so it doesn't shift around move your zip pull wherever you need to you're you're in control of this bag okay so i'll swap you over to the machine and i'm going to back stitch i'm going to start sewing at the three eighths of an inch and i'm going to back stitch before i get into it properly right so just double check you haven't overshot the mark there if your um if your zip panel did end up being longer double check that you haven't got any basting stitches showing on the front i haven't that's fine oh still got a pin in there though Let's take that pin out check you're all okay on the front yep yep and you've got a nice three eighths of an inch gap at either end lovely actually i've overshot the mark there slightly so i'm just going to remove a couple of little stitches just to make sure that i've got a nice size three eighths of an inch there okay lovely now that we've got that in place we can add our lining panel now if you're a hand baster then this is the bag for you because this bag loves it when you hand baste I hate hand basting, so um, I'm machine basting. <laughs> but if you're a hand baster, that's great. So lay this on top so you've got your main panel, your zip gusset, so those are right sides together, and then lay your lining panel on top there. So you're sandwiching the zip in between the two. So this is sort of a little bit like a um, a zip pouch just a basic zip pouch that we've all made previously um, I'm sure at some point in our sewing lives okay so match the center first and then smooth that along you can kind of smooth out those seam allowances and basting stitches and things to that side and the same on this side okay so just make sure that that is as nice and neat and ordered as it can be it is going to pull slightly because you've got the bulk of the bag sitting in you know in between still so on this side we're going to mark three eighths of an inch from each edge of the lining main panel and that's going to indicate where to start and stop sewing so that's that on that side and maybe should have marked these before i clipped it would have been a little bit easier probably that's okay where would life be if we only did easy things <laughs> okay right so now i'm going to start sewing at this mark back stitch as we did before and sew all the way along to this mark if you're not confident that you can go over the same stitches that you sewed before you can always sew on the other side you can flip this over and sew on the stitches that you sewed before in fact that sounds like a great idea and i'm going to do that so I'll clip that side and I'll turn it over and I can see where my stitches are on this side so I can sew directly on top of them. Sometimes I do have some very good ideas. Sometimes I even listen to them. <laughs> oh yes, that's much easier. Right, so let's double check that we've got our three eighths of an inch each side. Yep, lovely, okay, great. So now what we can do, double check, everything inside is as lovely as it can be. There's no puckers or 
anything like that, any basting stitches showing. And once you're happy, we're going to trim that top edge there with our pinking shears. Or if you haven't got any, then just clip into that seam allowance. Okay, so I'm going to start clipping. I'm going to start snipping with my pinking shears inside those three eighths of an inch marks. So leave those alone. Leave those ends alone as they are. Yep, lovely. Okay, so now we can flip this back exactly as you would for a, um, a basic zip pouch. Match those bottom edges just temporarily and pull these top corners out. This is just to help manipulate it into shape. Okay. So what we're going to do is just give it a little press along this top curve here to make sure that that sits nice and neat. You can open it up as much as you want. That helps it sit really lovely there, doesn't it? Nice and neat. So we'll give that a steam press to help that sit into shape. Now you might be tempted at this point to give that a little bit of a top stitch along that um, edge of the zip and I would say to you please don't at this point because you might be disappointed in the finish so even though it looks great at this stage once we finish it and put it all together and finish those top corners which are going to be like boxed corners but in the top that stitching um, doesn't it doesn't look great at the end um, just in these top corners so if you are going to top stitch start and finish it three eighths of an inch in okay so between those two marks again don't top stitch all the way to the end right okay that looks lovely and nice and neat away from the edge and you can start to get a little bit of a feel for how your bag is going to look not a very practical bag, admittedly, but it looks great, don't you think? Uh, right, I'm going to pause you for a minute while I cough. Okay. Ta da! <laughs> the magic of television. Right, and then we're going to do exactly the same on the other two pieces. So we need our second main panel and our second lining panel. And have we got a centre mark here? Let's just double check. Yes, I have. Mark that on the back so I know where we are. So we're going to try and ignore this front panel that we've already attached and just attach this second panel. Now, my zip gusset is too long on this side so I'm gonna definitely definitely have to match up where I'm going and then I can trim that off later okay so let's find the centers oh dear I think I've lost my center mark I pulled the pin out too early right what I can do then is I can follow from the rivet up and find my center mark again that's okay um, but that will stop our bag sitting wonky then. So if I've matched that to the rivet, yeah, great. Okay. So, centre part of our main panel, centre of our zip panel. Let's just double check that that's in line with the stitching and the rivets. Yep, lovely and clip that into place and then this end matches perfectly so I'll go ahead and match up that end um, I can only assume that my cutting out was terrible or um, my fabric has stretched slightly because I am using a cotton canvas um, which might have stretched slightly as I was clipping it into place okay 
just flatten that down. You can unzip this at this point if you want to. As long as you've got everything lined up, then you can unzip that. It does make this a lot easier, manipulating that into place. It doesn't really matter if your zip panel is slightly longer, as long as your um, main panels are even to themselves so that when your bag is zipped up, your bag is like this rather than a bit a bit squiffy um, if you like a squiffy bag then check out the squiffy bag pattern <laughs> but for a not squiffy bag line everything up okay it's a little bit of a bubble there so we'll just smooth that out make sure everything's nice and neat Great, okay, so now I'm going to start sewing again from the three eighths of an inch in. Um, in this case, my zip panel is too long again on this same end. So I'll pop a little pin in there to hold it in place and then mark three eighths of an inch in. Now it's funny that we've marked the centres and um, matched the centres but one side is too long which makes me think I've cut my um, zip gusset slightly too long. But I suppose at least if we find the mistake then we can correct the mistake can't we? Right so we've marked three eighths of an inch in from there and that's where I'm going to start and stop sewing. So exactly the same as we did for the first panel we're just going to base this into place take that pin out of the way before I catch myself on it and I've got my um, zip undone actually for this side which just makes it really nice and easy to manipulate under the foot Lovely. Okay, so again, double check that you've got a nice three eighths of an inch either end, which I think I have. Yep, great. Well, I might have slightly more than three eighths of an inch there. Let's have a look. Let's measure it and double check. You don't want too much more than three eighths of an inch, otherwise, you might end up with little gaps at the end. Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to go back and stitch maybe one or two more stitches just to make sure that that gap is not too big. So I'm bringing it in to make sure that's definitely three eighths of an inch. There we go. So that was literally two stitches. Right, okay. So now we can do exactly the same as we did for the first one as our back lining main panel so again we're going to match the centers um, to the center of the main panel which is there I've got a stray pin in here somewhere so let's pull that out before I go much further and then just ease that top curve around sandwich in the zip gusset as we go Okay, that matches up nicely. Which is funny because that's the side that is too long. So, who knows? <laughs> okay. I guess it's better that I make these mistakes and show you what to do than um, you make the mistakes and not know how to correct it. So that's okay. Right. So, um, open my zip slightly more I think 
and I'm going to sew again I'm going to sew on this side where those original basting stitches are because that worked quite well so again starting and ending the three eighths of an inch in from the end point there I thought I had something caught underneath I looked it was my zip pocket of course <laughs> right so again let's double check all of those layers are lovely and no basting stitches and no puckers nothing caught not even my zip pocket I'm glad I checked though. <laughs> if I hadn't have checked it probably would have been something uh, right and just trim those threads because I'm using a contrast colour so everything looks nice and neat I've only got three eighths of an inch gap at each end apart from this zip which needs trimming down and that's okay right so now we're going to trim that seam allowance with our pinking shears again so we're just going to trim that top curve in between the marks don't trim where the three eighths of an inch is These layers are a little bit thick, so take your time. Pinking shears are never seem to be built for bag making, thick layers. Right. Okay, so I'll get all these bits out of the way. And we're going to do the same as we did before. So flip all the layers back unpin that now because those are done so I can pin these bottom corners to make sure that they match and then we can pin uh, pull the layers out and give them a good press so at this point it's like we've made a big zip pouch okay and that's fine that's how it's supposed to look that's okay so we'll give these a little bit of a steam press just to hold these layers all in place away from this Zip, and that will help that zip to sit really nice down into that curve so it seems seems like we've got too much zip at the moment I know I do you know I completely understand if you're thinking hang on have we done this right but we have don't worry don't panic it is right so we'll do this top corner as well And we'll just check that sits nice. Yeah. Great. Okay. Right, so we've done our steaming. Now, I think what we need to do, actually, is clip this while we work on our gussets. So... Pull your zip. Use your fingers just to roll that seam so that the zip is sitting down inside the main panels and we're just going to clip along those top edges and this is going to train it into sitting really nice and neat so that your zip isn't poking out the top instead your zip will sit nice into that curve down there okay so that's one side clip just clip the other side and I'm just making sure that all my layers are together when I'm doing this because that will mean that the lining sits nice and neat as well um, but because we've sandwiched the zip in between the exterior and the lining you shouldn't get your lining sagging down inside keeps it nice and taut sort of attached to the top there right I think that's okay or maybe one more maybe just one more and we're going to leave this sitting clipped while we um, prepare our gusset and finish the rest of it so it's nearly a bag but not a very practical bag because everything will fall out the bottom so clip your zip gusset to sit nice and neat and then we'll put that to one side while we work on our side gusset and our base gusset okay so let's get started on our gussets what we'll need is our 
you should have two side gussets from your lining fabric, two side gussets from your exterior fabric, those should have interfacing and foam on, and then you should also have a lining base, a exterior base that should have interfacing and foam on as well all of the lining pieces should have interfacing but the exterior should have foam as well and then you should also have a piece of plastic bag base and the dimensions for this are in the materials list on your pattern okay um, they're also actually on the um, labels i've done a little label for the plastic bag base as well Right, so we'll put our exterior and bag base to one side. We just need our linings for the moment. So you should have two lining side gussets and one lining base. Okay. And your um, side gussets, you can see they're shaped slightly. So the shaped side is the top and then this is the bottom. We're going to place one of these, each one of these, onto the lining base, matching up those, uh, the bottom of your side gusset with the short end of the base. And we're going to pin that and then we're going to sew that into place. So you should have your lining side gusset like this with a shaped bit at the top and then your base there. And if you're really um, efficient, like me, also known as lazy you can pin the second one at the same time and then just flip them out of the way to sew that's okay so if you are using contrast threads for your exterior same as me then swap over to your lining color just to sew this bit um i am i'm going to keep my navy in so you can see what i'm doing so we're sewing these using the regular seam allowance, three eighths of an inch or one centimetre, regular stitch length, and we'll back stitch at the start and the end. Now we are going to press these seams open. Nice bit of steam. Surprise, surprise. And then you can, if you want to, you can top stitch these either side of these um, seams to keep those seam allowances um, in place, keep these seams nice and open. It's your choice. does give you a little bit of extra sort of detail inside your lining but um, and it does help keep the seam allowances nice and open but you don't need to if you don't want to if you're not confident on your top stitching or you don't particularly want to make a feature of it then that's okay you don't have to um, I'm using contrast thread so I probably won't today but you can if you want to uh, right let's check oh missed a little bit there Right, so I've sewn those two liner side gussets to my base gusset and pressed the seams open. Um, let's see what we're going to do next. Oh. I know what we're going to do next. Now, in the pattern, you do your lining and attach that, and then you attach your um, exterior. So we can pop those to one side for the minute. Now, where we've had our pattern clipped together that's great but we can undo that now should hopefully have given it enough time just to sit very nicely and have a little relax into that curve there okay now what we're going to do is we are going to open these out so pull your exteriors towards each other and maybe just open the zip halfway just to give us a bit of wiggle space and we're gonna now attach these lining gussets to the lining panels. So you can start on whichever side you prefer. You can start on your front or your back, doesn't really matter, as long as you're keeping those exteriors out of the way. So whichever panel you're starting on,
pull all three other layers. So I've got one layer of lining, two of exterior out of the way. Now I've got my center mark on my lining as I had that from before, from when I was doing my pockets and pieces. So I'm just folding my gusset in half to get the center mark for my gusset. And I'll mark that both sides so that I'm ready for later. We're gonna match this center mark of the gusset onto the center mark of the lining main panel. Now, you can, I'm doing the um, panel with a zip pocket here, so I'm just gonna pin that up out of the way so that I don't get worried about catching it again. It was you know. It was very confusing last time, wasn't it? <laughs> right, so this flat bit along the bottom, we could just go ahead and clip that or pin that easily. No, no modifications needed at all. But then this top corner, just pull this out of the way. Maybe I'll swap you to the other view so you can see a bit close up. So just pull this whole zip panel out of the way and match that side gusset to the top side of the lining main panel. And I'm gonna use a pin for this one. And again, we're gonna start stitching 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge. So we will need to um, mark that. But the rest of it, I'm just gonna use clips for. Okay. Now clip as far as you can without it feeling like it's pulling too much. Okay, so you can see here, that's not quite long enough to go around the curve. What we're gonna do, we're gonna snip into the seam allowance of this and just manipulate that to go around the curve. Okay. I'll pin and clip the other side first and then we'll do our snipping all in one go. We're a bit snipped out after the um, zip gusset, aren't we? I'll just pin in that top side as well to make sure that that's staying in place. Okay. Don't get too confused by the um, other layers. Just pull them all out of the way and just work on this one side of the lining for the minute. Okay, so we've got as far as we can. So I've clipped both straight edges and the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to snip into these parts of the side and base gusset to help manipulate them round this curve on the main panel of the lining. So I'm just going to turn it around to face me so I can see what I'm doing. But feel free to snip into that a good quarter of an inch I'd say, not too far because you don't want to snip through your seam allowance. But snip all the way along through the base and the side gusset little snips every couple of millimetres and this just helps manipulate it around the curve so you get a nice neat curve and it sort of fits perfectly then in theory right so once you've snipped that you can just give it a little tug and it sits I don't know how it works it's complete magic or you're stretching the fabric by snipping it one of the two i know which one i believe in um, and you can just clip that into place nice and neat around the curve and that fits perfectly now magic stretching the fabric you can decide which one you believe right so we'll do the same on the other side so again just snipping every couple of millimeters into that um, seam allowance on the side gusset and the base gusset. This one I might go a little bit further actually. So just pull that into place then. 
and clip it around the corner. Again, that's worked as if by magic, making that fit perfectly there. Okay, don't be afraid of your fabric. Give it a good old tug if you need to, pull it into place. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to stitch this side into place just on this one lining main panel. So we're stitching one side of the lining gusset onto the one lining panel. We're going to start and finish three eighths of an inch from the top. So I'll get my pencil and mark where we need to start and stop stitching. I'm just measuring down from the top three eighths of an inch, same as we did before. Pop a little mark there just to indicate to yourself where to stop. And we'll back stitch again at the start and the ends as we did before. So you don't want this coming unraveling while you're sewing the other bits. Right, so I'll start sewing at this top corner here. And remember, I've got my contrast thread in still. So if you are using um, two different threads and swap it to match your lining now so that you don't end up with a contrast seam. It can show sometimes, can't it, um, through the seam if you use a contrast colour. Right, so we are going to start sewing at our 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, that's one centimetre. And then after a little while, maybe an inch or so, we're going to um, increase that to a half an inch seam allowance. And then before we get back to the other side, we're just going to decrease it back down again so that we start and finish with an inch worth of seam allowance at 3 eighths of an inch. And the rest is all half an inch. That's one centimetre or 1.2 centimetre if you're working in metric. Right, so now that we've sewn that, just double check you haven't got any packers in there. So check around the seam, take out those pins from the top have a little look inside, check there's no puckers or um, anything that you would want to unpick and redo. No, great. So now we're gonna trim the curves and you only need to trim those curved corners. You don't have to trim the rest of it with our pinking shears and that will just give us a nice, um, nice finish around the corners, okay? So don't worry too much about the rest of it. Just worry about the curves and just give them a quick trim in the seam allowances just to trim that excess off and that will just um, help it to sit a bit neater in your finished bag. Okay, or maybe a little bit more. Okay. Right, lovely. Okay, so now ignoring those two exterior layers still, okay, so leave those to one side. Now we're going to attach this lining panel to the other side of the lining gusset. Okay, so again, matching our centre marks first. Lovely, and then the ends. And just pull everything else out of the way. Just pretend it doesn't exist. All we're interested in is the second side of this lining gusset and the lining main panel. So do the straight edges first, however you can, and then we'll worry about getting everything else eased into place later. So I'm putting a pin in my top corners again, same as I did for the first half. Just to make sure that they stay where they should doing these straight edges. And I'll do this uh, bottom as well. And then we'll clip our curves and ease it around, same as we did before. Right, how's that looking? That's fine, I can do a little bit more on this side. 
Right, so now I can clip into these corners to help manipulate them around this curve, this bottom corner curve. And if you do your clipping and go to do your pinning and find it still won't quite stretch, and just unpin a bit further and clip a bit more. Let's have to clip that a bit close. Okay, I'll just sn oh. I'm using clip for snipping and also clipping. Um, wait, so I'm sorry to be confusing. I will clip this into place now that I have snipped the corner. All right. And now I can clip the snipped corner into place. That makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> it's a good job you can see what I'm doing. Good job it's not a radio programme. <laughs> Wouldn't be very effective, I think. Right, so now I will snip these corners so that I can clip them into place. That's better. I don't know why we call it clipping when actually you're snipping. Right, so now I have snipped, I can clip. Oh dear. It's the simplest explanations, isn't it? <laughs> there we go, so get that nicely into place and then we'll sew around it the same as we did before, exactly the same. So starting and ending three eighths of an inch from the top, which I will mark now and starting using our 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then tapering to a half inch seam allowance. Right by that pin, okay. Do this side. Uh, where am I? There. I've put my pin in the wrong side, it's confused me. Confused me terribly. Easily confused. Couldn't work out which side I was on. Okay. So I like to sew with the gusset up so that if there are going to be any puckers, I can control them. I can see where they're coming and I can manipulate the fabric away from puckers then. Just pull all of these other layers out of the way. Pretend they don't exist. And get that under the foot like that. Right, lovely, okay. So I'll take my pins out and have a little look, check I haven't got any puckers. I can see that my um, gusset is pulling away from my line panel, so it um, means it's nice and taut. Now, here's the question. Did we leave the zip pocket open? Because if not, we're going to struggle slightly to check these curves, aren't we? Oh no, it's all right. <laughs> and the answer is no, we did not leave the zip pocket open. So open that now before we head for disaster. Right, so I can just reach in and double check. There's no puckers or anything on my lining side that I've just attached can't see any I think we're good so I can trim that I forgot that the exterior was open <laughs> Phew. that was a close one wasn't it now we can trim these corners on this second side of the lining that we've just done and then that's our lining completely finished 
we just need to attach the exterior then. we go right so I think all of my curves are nicely trimmed now so they'll sit nice let's just double check our bags yep great okay so it's a slightly more practical bag now still no handle and stuff but things won't fall out at least right so we'll do the um, exterior gusset now so you are going to need your exterior side gussets and your base gusset with foam, all with foam attached and our, um, our hard base. So what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach these the same as we did before to our base. So the short end, match the short end of the bottom of the side gussets to the base and we'll sew those and then we'll press those seams open if we can and oh, that's no good pop it there so same seam allowance back stitch at the start and the end And the second side. Okay, so we'll give these a little steam press to help them sit open a little bit more, if we can. Um, you can always unpick those basting stitches and trim a little bit more if you want to. You don't need to. Um, you should be able to... Um, oh, that's no good there either, is it? There we go. So you should be able to flatten these pretty well. Um, and if you want to go ahead and top stitch either side on the right side to keep them into place, you can. Um, that will look quite nice, I think. Well, I say I think I've done it on my own bag because um, I've got one of these as my own as my handbag so that's what I've done on mine right so now that we've got those seam allowances done and pressed open I'm going to fold this in half and find the center mark on the back and just mark that not only do we need that for lining up when we're attaching it to the main but we also need it for punching our um, holes for our feet as well because we've got bag feet on this bag right so there's my center okay pop your bag base on lining it up so make sure that's centered on your um, on your base there and it should be just in between the seam allowances and approximately middle ish okay so we are going to punch our holes let's mark these um i wonder if i turn you back you might be able to see a little bit better yeah maybe if i go forwards a little bit okay so we're going to put them one inch from the raw edge and one inch from the seam line so A little mark there oh dear maybe I need my chalk pen for this possibly leave a little bit of chalk behind one inch there and one inch from the seam line there now I should have got my board up I think and then I can punch these holes without having to worry about 
moving it and losing my space. Uh, sorry, losing my markings where I've placed them. Let's bring that up. Make sure that we're doing it in the right place then. I don't have to worry about moving things. Uh, right, so I think that's lined up where it was. Uh, so now we need our hole punch and hammer. So I'll do these two and then I've got these two that I can um, use, use these as reference then for making sure that everything's in the right place for the others. Okay, great. Right, so now I can clip that into place just along the very, very edges and then do the two on the other side. There's five holes um, on this, this base. So we'll do four that are one inch from the edge and one inch from the seam line. And then one right in the very center. I can't help but think a big felt tip pen might have been better for this hole marking. And that doesn't look like that matches that. So, oh no, I'm looking at the wrong line. Phew, good job we spotted that, isn't it? My ruler very helpfully has got, is 12 and a half inches rather than just being 12 inches. And it does confuse me, <laughs> as you can see. Phew, good job we checked that. I'd have to cut another one. Okay, so that one matches up with that one. That's fine. And then this one should match up with this one. Got my little placement. Punch my hole before I lose it. Right, okay, so now we need to mark the center. Now we know how wide our base is. So we can, um, using the, let me turn my ruler around so I can work out the measurements, be better. So using those centre marks that we've made, place your ruler on top and find that centre exactly based on both the measurements of the base and those centre marks that we've got there. And then we can punch our hole as well. Right, so in theory, we've got five holes through our bag base and five holes through our exterior base there. Lovely. Lost my chalk lid again. Not sure how I keep doing it. Oh, I found it. Panic over. Panic over. I know you were panicking, so I'm glad I was able to find that. Uh, right, so we'll add a little bit of fray check to those and we'll add it to the right side just to make sure that the holes don't expand any further than we want them to, because otherwise our feet will fall out. And we can put our bag base to one side for the minute. We'll need that right at the end. We won't need our board anymore, hopefully. Pop that back down again. So now all we need to do is exactly the same as we did for the lining. So we're gonna pretend that the lining doesn't exist and this time we're gonna add the gusset to the exterior panels. So we've got our center marks. We match the center of the line, uh, the gusset to the center of the main panel. And then the top corner. And the second top corner. And then we'll match our straight edges as much as we can before easing in those curves.
Right, so I've clipped that on the easy bits, and now I'm just going to snip into my seam allowances so that I can ease it around these corners. As I said before, just give it a tug, pull it into place, show it who's boss. Okay. Although if you're a parent or you've got a pet or something like that, then maybe um, that is the boss of your house. I've got a child. Um, so that's who is the boss in our house. But in this case, you are making the bag, so you are the boss of the bag. <laughs> Just pull it into place. And then we'll just clip that all the way around the curve. Okay. So again, we're going to start sewing at three eighths of an inch away from the top. So we'll end up with all these top corners um, unsewn at three eighths of an inch. Okay, don't panic. That is um, intentional. Mark on the gusset because I like to sew with the gusset side up so that I know where everything's going. I can control any puckers then three-eighths of an inch on this side. There we go. Right, now on this one, we are not going to taper our seam allowance. So we're going to start sewing at three-eighths of an inch and we are going to continue sewing at three-eighths of an inch all the way round between those two marks. So start three-eighths of an inch from the top, one centimetre from the top, and use a seam allowance of three-eighths of an inch, one centimetre all the way round. Okay, and I'm on my regular stitch length. I'm just gonna pull all of these layers through under my foot, make sure they're all nice and flat under there. Um, although you're not sewing through too many layers at this point, you're only sewing through the exterior um, main and the gusset, but you just need to get all of those bits under your, um, under your walking foot. There. Okay, so I'm going to start my needle down again. Right, so just as I came towards the end there, I just made sure that all of these bits that we're not sewing were just flat so that they didn't catch on the foot or, or pull me out of, um, out of the way as I was going around or anything. So double check that we got our gap at the top yep lovely check there's no puckers in your sewing right yep okay and then we'll trim these seam allowances with our pink and shears again just around the curves as we did before i'm just going to pick this clip up before i stand on it i lost a few too many that way recently your layers are thick around these curves when you're trimming so just take your time not great if you catch your skin um, as you're trying to clip around these curves with pink and shears okay lovely all right and we've made it through with no injuries which is great right now double check that your zip pocket is still open and your top zip is open you're going to need to move this sort of in i don't know about a quarter of the way in or a third of the way in and then we're going to pull this out and match this exterior main panel to this side of the exterior gusset 
okay so we're just ignoring this whole lining piece here and treating this as a whole two separate bags all together so clip the middle into place and then the two top edges all the straight bits and then we can snip into our seam allowance for the curves at this point we're professionals at doing this aren't we because um, this is our fourth panel so we know what we're doing now and don't forget we're going to be starting sewing three eighths of an inch one centimeter from the top to leave that top bit unsewn Uh, I've got a stray thread there. I'm just going to pull that out. There we go. And if you catch them now, you don't have to trim so many later, do you? Oh, there's always one. <laughs> right, so now I can snip into my seam allowance on my gusset and just ease that last little bit into place. Can you see where I've got my... It doesn't quite fit into place. Slightly too short until you snip. And that's how we end up without puckered bottoms or saggy bottoms by making it slightly shorter and then easing it into place. If you're sewing a different pattern that you find that you get do get a bit of a puckered gusset or a bit of a saggy gusset, then just shorten it slightly and do the same. There's this just a quarter of an inch, half an inch. Should be enough. Just to give you um, enough to just pull it round and get a nice taut finish. Okay, that is one corner done. Not pulled it quite into place there. There we go. So we'll do the second corner. And I'll just pull this one into place as well. And then we can sew it the same as we did the other side. So we're not tapering on the exterior. We don't need to taper on the exterior because they should be fine. So using our regular stitch length, regular seam allowance. Oh, hang on. I need to mark three eighths of an inch from the top. I know where to stop and start sewing. So I just mark my three eighths of an inch down from the top there. And this side as well. And then we are nearly, very nearly to the final stages, which is quite exciting. So get this under the machine. Again, just pull all of those layers out of the way However you need to sort of pull this manipulator into place. There we go. Oh, let me swap you back so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So we'll start sewing. Same as we did before. Exactly the same. Right, now the only way we're going to be able to double check that we haven't got any puckers or anything is to open up that seam allowance, uh, the turning gap, sorry, in the zip pocket. So I know that we steamed it earlier, but if you didn't steam it earlier, this is your time to steam it. And I'm going to steam it again, just in case I did forget, although I'm sure I didn't forget, but just in case. Right, and then we can open that using our... Um, unpicker just take those basting stitches out and because they're basting stitches are nice and big easy to remove but where we've steamed it you can see we've left behind the little um, little stitch holes Okay, 
So I'll reach through this turning gap and have a little feel of my exterior gusset there and just double check I haven't got any puckers and if I have then I can just unpick that section go back and redo it oh oh dear I'm caught on my zip um right hang on I think I might have felt a little no nope. nope we're all good okay so now I can trim these curves with my pinking shears again and then we can turn it through. No, we can't turn it through yet. We've got to do our strap tabs first and then we can turn it through and we'll see what our bag looks like for the first time. It's exciting, isn't it? Do all this work and then suddenly you turn it through and you see what it looks like. I think that's my favourite bit, turning it through. Right. Okay, so um, those are all lovely, all curves done. Okay, so we'll put this to one side for the moment. We'll be back though to it. And we need our strap tabs. So you'll need your strap tabs and rectangular rings. Oh dear, one of my rectangular No, hang on. I put them in my drawer. I thought they were in the project bag that had fallen on the floor. <laughs> Right, so you'll need your strap tab and your rectangular ring. We're gonna draw a line down the center of that strap tab like this. And then we're gonna press, we're gonna fold and press each long edge into the center. Okay, so that is, um, let me put that on the, on the grid so that you can see. So we'll be drawing a line at one and a half inches in, which is uh, 3.8 centimetres. Okay. So we'll give that a little steam press. So fold each long edge into the centre and press. Nice, neat finish. a bit got quite a few bits on me from our um pinking shears okay so now that we've got those folded in to the middle we're going to top stitch along both long edges but on the right side so we'll use our one eighth of an inch seam allowance or three mil seam allowance regular stitch length and just sew it along both long edges Now we're going to thread our rectangular ring through it to the centre and if you've got a wire ring like mine there's a join I like to put that side through um, just so I know exactly where it is. We're going to baste along this bottom edge maybe I should trim these actually before we go much further otherwise they'll be poking out somewhere that I don't want them to. I'll just trim those off. So base these seam allowances together along the bottom. I'll do my second one as well. So I've got two of these. I just use my regular stitch length for those little bits of basting like that. Now I'm going to change my foot over to my zip foot and sew really close to the rectangle rings just so I know they're not going to swivel in, um, in the strap tabs once we're um, using our bag. So I'm just going to pause you for a minute while I swap my foot over and then I'll come back. 
Right, I've changed my foot over and all I'm going to do is just pop these through, sewing nice and close to the, um, to the end. So I've just done two lines of stitching on there. I went forwards and backwards, exactly the same. You can fray check the ends if you're worried about them coming undone, if you haven't backstitched, which I haven't. So I will add a dab of fray check onto there. Just make sure that's not gonna come undone. And I'll do the same with the second one as well. Dab a fray check to these because I also didn't backstitch these. Just think it looks a bit neater if you don't backstitch, but then you've got the worry of the threads coming undone. So if you're using this bag, heavy duty use, definitely do backstitch or consider tying off your threads. Um, but for this one, it's likely to um, only receive light use. Okay, um, what do we? Oh, I need to change my foot back. So I'll change my foot back um, and then we'll get on with uh, finishing up. So all we need to do now is insert these strap tabs, actually finish the boxed corners in the top and then we'll um, just turn it through. Um, and then the strap, um, oh, I've left the strap till last. Um, and the bag comes with shoulder strap, two different shoulder strap options or you can add a crossbody strap if you want to adjust it, if you want to edit the um, pattern or hack the pattern. I can't find my, hold for my screw, there we go. If you want to change the pattern and add an adjustable strap, you can cut that 60 inches and just add, um, add a slider and you've already got the rectangle rings. So you can do that quite easily so you just cut it the same width, but just 60 inches long. Okay, right. Check that's okay. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Right, now we need our bag back. Here's one I made earlier, as you know. <laughs> and do you see these little holes here? We've got little gaps in the top corner of each side. This is where we're going to insert our strap tabs. Okay, so between the two exterior layers, you've got the exterior gusset and the zip gusset there, exterior zip gusset. Pop that in with the ring inside. So line up the edge of the strap tab with the edge of the zip gusset. Okay, uh, I wonder if you see this better maybe here. Okay, so we've got, I'll show you that again. So we've got all of our layers, we've got our linings, pull that back and you've got the exterior zip gusset here and the exterior side gusset here. Pop this strap tab inside with the ring in first, lining up those raw edges and match the centre so it's nicely central on that side gusset there. And then flatten this zip gusset out over the top of it. And again, make sure that's nice and centered, okay? So you've got in here, you've got your exterior side gusset, your strap tab, your zip 
gusset, exterior and lining. Make sure those are all nicely even. All the fabric layers are nicely even. It doesn't matter if your zip is poking out the end a bit, that's fine. And then flatten out on top this last layer of the lining side gusset. Okay, so we've got here a nice little sandwich. We've got our lining side gusset, our zip gusset, lining matching lining, exterior matching exterior, and the strap tab is just in there between the exterior side gusset and the exterior zip. And then we'll just pop a couple of clips in there. Just make sure that all your layers are nice and flat. And there should be a little bit of a corner, a sort of a diagonal corner, where these layers fold back in the corners, okay? Now we're gonna stitch across here using, let me double check, I think it's half an inch. Just wanna double check. Yeah, a half inch seam allowance, okay? So that should overlap this stitching at the top and the bottom. Do you remember all those um, bits where we started and stopped three eighths of an inch away? We're gonna overlap all of those. So we're gonna sew across this entire top as though it's a boxed corner with all of those layers through at a half an inch seam allowance, okay? So take your time. Don't rush this. Just make sure all those layers are nice and sort of nicely flattened out as best you can. We're going to back stitch at the start and the end of this. Once you've sewn that top corner, just have a quick look and check that you've gone over all of those bits that you left open at quarter of an inch, uh, sorry, three eighths of an inch. So I've just caught the end there, just caught the end there, caught the end there, caught the end there, great. What you can also do is reach through your turning gap. I'll swap you back for this bit. So reach through your turning gap and just feel into that top corner and double check there's no holes in any of those corners. Yeah, there's no gaps at all in any of those corners. Great, okay, so that's one corner done. You can snip the corners off of that now, okay? I'll do it, I'll do it first so that you know what you're doing. Okay, so you snip from there in. Just take away as much of that bulk as you can. And then the other side as well. Okay, so we've taken away the corners there. I'm going to do exactly the same in the second side. But this side, remember, my zip was too long, wasn't it? So on this one, I'm just going to flatten all of these layers out first and clip in the sides here and then I'm going to trim my zip down before we do any kind of pinning and adding anything else. Right so I've got my hand in there to make sure that that's nice and flat, my zip is flat, all of those layers are nice and flat so I can trim this end of my zip. Okay, so in theory that all matches nicely now. Great, okay, so exactly the same. Thread your, um, actually do you know what, before we go any further, because my two ends of my zip are open now and I can't be guaranteed that I'm gonna catch those evenly. So I'm just gonna get a little hand needle and I'm gonna sew those together and then I'll add my strap tab, just to be sure that everything that we're sewing is all nice and equal um, and in the right place. Okay, so I'm gonna pause you, go and get a hand needle and I'll be back in a sec. Right, okay. Got myself a hand needle. I'm just gonna stitch these 
two sides of the zip together just to be sure that it's not all going to come apart um, when we're sewing that top corner because if you remember I did have it nicely sewn together and then I trimmed the end off didn't I which was <laughs> very helpful but just to be sure I think and get a nice neat finish it's better to just add a few stitches even though I hate hand stitching just add a few stitches to hold it in place right that's better there we go now we can pretend that I didn't take the stitches out altogether to start with right <laughs> So as we did before, exactly the same. I'm just gonna add this strap tab in, um, again, between those exterior layers. Okay, try to get it centered. You should have a center mark on the gusset if you follow the instructions on the pattern to add center marks. We can guess which camp I'm in for that one. <laughs> just flatten everything out and okay so I'll add a clip to that so exactly the same as we did before just make sure all of these layers are nice even flattened out and those um, those sort of corners of the main panels should just form little triangles hold everything nice and smooth and we're going to sew that again with the half inch seam allowance and that will um, that will sew over the seams that we sewed before do you remember we stopped at three eighths of an inch so this will cross over those just to sort of finish those seams off and make sure that we don't have any gaps then. Right, so just double check on the back and on the front that all of those are crossed over. Yep, caught everything in my seam. Lovely, again, I can reach through, have a little feel our turning gap make sure there's no holes in those top corners just have a little feel no is there a little hole no no great okay so again we'll trim these corners and then we can turn it through and that's when we'll get our first look at our new bag and all that we need to do then is add our strap. So I'll grab, I'm grabbing the um, exterior base. Just pulling that through, just very, very gently tug it through. Once you start to get a bit of it out, then you can encourage the rest through just very gently. through that turning gap in the bottom. And this is why we've done some good back stitches at each side of our turning gap, just to make sure that it can hold up as we turn it through. Just gently tug it out. No need to panic. It does fit, it's fine. Once you get to a certain point, you can put your hand in through the turning gap and just push out all of those curves around the bottom. Push everything into place. Make sure everything's where it should be. And then these top corners, get those, get your finger in there and just push those out into those top corners. And you can sort of finger roll it a little bit and just manipulate those into place. You can give your bag a good steam press afterwards anyway, so don't panic too much about that. And again, 
pull that out. Right, so I think that's all of the edges pulled out into place. Let's have a look. Yeah, that looks good. Looks good. I've got a loose thread there. Let's come off. That's great. Okay, so last thing we need to do on this part is add the bag base. So do you remember we punched those holes here and we've got our plastic bag base here. So um, we need to reach through that turning gap and put that bag base into place on that, um, on that base panel there. And get your feet. So with one hand inside and one hand on the outside. So put one hand inside. I'm going to push that foot through the middle there. Now have a good feel, or well, can't really feel, so I'll have a little look. Pop that center hole of the bag base over that foot and then open out the prongs. So we've got our center foot in place. Okay, and that's going to hold that bag base steady while you do the other feet. So just manipulate that bag base into it. You can't really see what I'm doing, but um, I'll have to describe it to you. So I've just pulled the seam allowances out over the plastic bag base. So my bag base is directly next to the fabric without the seam allowances in the way. Okay. And that will give you a really nice, neat finish then at the, at the bottom of your bag. So just pull those seam allowances out over the top of the bag base so this sits nice and snug right in that gap okay so just pull that out i'm sure i'm pulling some funny faces i know but um there we go okay so all of my seam allowances now are on top of the plastic bag base, which means that it's going to be held really tight next to um, that exterior fabric. So now we can push the feet through for the other holes. And in theory, our holes inside our plastic bag base will be in the right place. I maybe got the wrong side. Oh, I think I've got it in the wrong way around. Hang on. Have to, I'll have to swivel it round. Hang on. Okay, let's try again. Oh, now I'm going to have to put all those seam allowances back on the top again, aren't I? My goodness. Right. So if you can reach through and see what you're doing, do. It's so much easier than trying to do it, um, do it blind. Right, let's try it again. That's better, there's my hole. Obviously I had it the wrong way around. I obviously didn't have it as centered as I thought I did when I punched those holes. <laughs> it's what happens when you don't measure, I guess. So just open out those prongs on all five of those feet. If you've got washers, you can add them. Um, I don't think we really need washers on this one because we're using a pla uh, plastic bag base which will hold those feet um, in place. Oh, they look great. They do look good. I think bag feet add a certain finish to a bag. Um, right, let me just check that's in place before I open the prongs. Yep. And this last one. Okay. Now we need a little bit of tape. Oh, let me check I've got my seam allowances out right now. Yep. Yep. That was easier the second time. Much easier the second time. So I'm just going to add a little bit of duct tape to the back, or electrical tape, to the back of these prongs to stop them um, rubbing through to my lining fabric and it will stop them shifting or opening up or anything like that. So even though they're through the um, plastic bag base, just to be sure that they're definitely not going anywhere. Um, and also the um, edges are not going to rub through to my lining. 
nothing worse than putting your hand in your bag and feeling something through the fabric is there so a little bit of this tape just covers them up nicely and also if you get a fun tape it's a little bit of a secret inside your bag isn't it that nobody knows about right two more and then we can close this turning gap and get on with the strap now strap making is not my favorite but that's not why i left it till last i left it till last because you don't need the strap to be able to make the rest of the bag so you can leave it till now and then decide which length strap you're going to do if you want to um, or if you want to do a contrast strap or you know something like that or you could even add um, instead of the rectangle rings you could add something like triangle rings or d-rings and have a detachable strap can you right so my feet are in so we'll pull this turning gap out and close that now where we steamed along those basting stitches earlier should be lovely stitch holes that are seam allowances just naturally fold along and I'm just giving it a little bit of a help from my fingernails just using my fingers to press down on there to get a really nice finish nice finish but I haven't even ironed that and it's folded over really nice and neat so that's great that corner out so it get a nice neat finish now this is going to be inside your zip pocket so it doesn't really matter too much but I think the signs of a really well-made bag are these little professional details these lovely neat finishes um, that you get at the end so we'll just pop that under and I'm going to sew with a really 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 close seam allowance so just just slightly smaller than an eighth of an inch I think or sort of two or three mil if you can handle it don't forget if you don't absolutely hate hand stitching you could have closed that with a, um, a ladder stitch which would have given an even neater finish but you would have had to hand stitch it so it's your choice right we'll poke this zip pocket back inside then and just poke those corners out nice and neat and close our zip pocket and then push all of those edges into place inside and you can give it a steam press now if you want i'm just going to leave mine zipped up for a minute while i do my strap but everything is pretty much um, nice and neat in there um, even just from finger pressing it looks nice and neat so i can give it a steam afterwards what we're going to do next is our strap and that's the last thing we need to do so again you guessed it we're going to give it a steam press <laughs> how did you guess <laughs> and we're going to end up with a fully enclosed strap here so uh can you see that no you can't you see the iron from there now okay move this pin before i catch myself on it Right, what we're going to do is same as we would do any regular four fold strap I'll just fill up my iron for a minute before we go much further i've used a lot of steam today surprisingly <laughs> but we're going to fold it in half and give it a steam press to get that nice center crease and then we're going to fold the edges into the center and give it a press so um if you've made a strap before it's probably very similar this pressing process very similar to how you've made a strap before okay so first thing I'm going to do is fold it in half and give it a press to get that center crease okay and then 
I'm going to open it out and fold each long edge in to the center and give it a press again. Now this bag looks great with a contrast strap. So if you've got a contrast fabric just hanging around or, you know, a piece that you can use extra, and that works really well. Okay. And then the same again for the other side. Fold it into the center and give it a press. Okay, and then we'll, why do you always do a good shoot of steam right at the end after you finish pressing? And then we'll just fold it in half again along that original center crease and give it another steam press. Okay, now this is where it's different to a regular strap. What we're gonna do is, oh, I'll move my bag out of the way now. We're going to fold this back on itself. So open it up and fold it back on itself so that it's got those nice folded edges inside and these raw edges on the outside. And then we're just going to stitch that using a quarter of an inch seam allowance at the end. Back stitch at the start and the end. And then we're going to do the same the other side. So fold it back on itself. And I like to match the folded edges and start sewing at the folded edges first because then you know that you've got a nice, neat finish. So again with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And we're going to trim those corners. on this side as well. Okay. I'm making a mess here, aren't I, with my trimming? Right, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold this right sides out like that, and tuck it in, and it looks like a little, little sailboat there. So if you've got something that's, um, I don't know, maybe a, screwdriver or a crochet stick or something just pop it right into the corner to get that corner nicely poked out give it a nice finger roll and we'll do the same the other side usually I have a crochet hook but um, a majority of my supplies are downstairs in the main studio at the moment there we go okay so all we need to do now is just give this another press just to make sure that that's nice and in place. Do you know what? While I've got the steam going, let's give this a bit of a, a bit of a steam. Now, usually I would put my hand inside and I've got a special pressing glove. But um, again, that's downstairs. So I'm just going to give it a quick steam press for the minute and the top. And then I can do a proper steam press for my... Um, with my heat protection glove when I go downstairs. For the minute, that looks good. So we'll just give this strap another little press just to make sure it's all nice and neat and in place and those corners are nice and neat. And then we are gonna sew around all four sides. So I'm gonna start at the open end or the open side I'm going to start part way down so I'll start here on this open edge so all the way down to, um, and then around along the short corner a short side sorry back up the long side and back along so I'm going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance that's three mil if you're in metric and I'm not going to back stitch I think I'm just going to overlap my stitches slightly and because I've got a bit of navy flower there I'm going to start and stop on the navy flower and that will hopefully hide it a little bit um, so start with your needle down and as you get towards the corner you can um, stop with your needle down, lift the presser foot, pivot 
and um, keep sewing. Same as we did for the um, zip box earlier. If you think that you're not gonna be able to get to the corner really neatly, then change your stitch length down as low as you need to, just to get to that corner, maybe one or two stitches at number one, and then you can change it back up to your regular stitch length as you turn the corner. Nobody's gonna notice just a couple of tiny little stitches in the corner there. Okay, so we'll sew this strap and then we can add it onto the bag. Right, there we go. So that is our strap all fully sewn. All we need to do now is attach this to our bag. So let's just double check how much we need to fold it over by one and a half inches, that's 3.8 centimetres. So, uh, I can't remember which, that's our front panel on my one, I think. If you've got the label, then that's easier to tell, isn't it? Just thread your strap through from the right side, fold it over by one and a half inches, and you can either stitch this or rivet it to keep it in place. So maybe I should measure this. If I'm telling you a measurement, I should probably measure it, shouldn't I? Well, let me trim this loose thread while I see it. Sorry, I know you've got things to do. <laughs> Before I go a bit much further. I think that's gonna annoy me otherwise. Okay. So let's have a look. One and a half inches. Uh, make sure I'm not twisting my strap over. into place. I should probably double check this one. Check how far I've done that. Well it's not bad, it's not great, but it's not bad. It's <laughs> not perfect. <laughs> right, that's great. Okay, so you've got the choice now of either riveting or just stitching that into place. I think I'm going to stitch mine into place um, because I haven't got my press up here um, to do this. Um, and I think you've heard enough of me hammering rivets for today. So I'll just slot that under the foot there. And I'm sewing on the right side of the strap. So it's a little bit awkward. Just pull your bag out of the way. can always go back and add a rivet later can't I if in doubt stick a rivet in it okay and I'll do the second side so again exactly the same to pull the main bag out of the way go oh loose thread take that off there we go so that's our finished bag I'm really pleased with that that looks great in fact that matches my outfit quite nicely I like how it sits under under my arm uh, I could tell you how long this strap length is actually um, that would be handy because there are two different lengths aren't there so um, that's one and a half so let's start that from there 18. I'm sure there's an easier way of doing this. Right, so this has got to be the 30 inch strap. Uh, let me tell you how long 30 inches is in metric, because it is in here. Uh, da -da -da. So that is the 76 centimeter 30 inches strap. And that's how that sits there on me. So I love that. 
I really enjoyed sewing this bag. Actually, it's one of my favorite bags. Um, I use this bag myself. Um, my own handbag is a classic handbag. Not this one, although I don't know. I'm kind of tempted by this one now because I quite like the colors on it. I hope you've enjoyed sewing along with me and I can't wait to see your bags. So if you make a classic handbag, please let me know. Le leave a comment or come and find us on um, Facebook or Instagram. We're at Sewing Patterns by Mrs. H. Or send us an email. My email address is Mrs. H at Mrs. H.com. I look forward to seeing what you make. Bye-bye.